Welcome everyone to this video series all about comping. Comping is a term jazz musicians use to describe how a pianist or a guitarist plays chords and rhythm to propel or support the soloist. Today I'm going to give a brief overview of my new book, An Approach to Comping, The Essentials, which investigates this special propulsive way of accompanying so central to jazz. When I was learning to play jazz, the world of comping seemed utterly mysterious. It was like a secret language that only great jazz pianists and guitarists could speak. I recognized the crucial role comping played when it came to becoming a contributing member of the rhythm section. In jazz, unlike other styles of music, comping is usually not a repeated pattern for very long. It's always varied yet always seems to fit in the right place. It's definitely an elusive, elegant language practiced by many jazz greats dating back to the beginning of jazz. My goal in writing this book was to provide some information about what some of the masters of the music were actually playing behind the soloist when they were comping. The book contains 14 complete comping transcriptions of some of the most important p comping pianists in history, including Bud Powell, Horace Silver, Barry Harris, Tad Dameron, R Red Garland, Sonny Clark, and Bobby Timmons. Each transcription corresponds to a complete horn solo on the given chord changes. A discography is provided so that you can investigate the original records. Here are two of my favorite comps from the book. First is an illustration of Horace Silver's comping on Erigen behind Miles from Miles Davis's quintet recording Bag's Groove from 1954. Famous for his intense energy and dedication to swing, Horace Silver sparks the rhythm section. Horace believes in giving it your all from the beginning of the song to the end, not just saving your energy for your own solo. Since we are just starting out, we can use the two CDs that accompany the book as a primer course before jumping in with the jazz greats. So first listen to the demonstration with piano and then play along to a pianoless track with top New York musicians including David Wong on bass, Pete Van Nostrand on drums, Jerry Weldon on tenor sax, and Joe Magnarelli on trumpet. <laughs> Instead of just listening to jazz records, you can sit in and play along with the jazz greats. You can experience the rhythm section one-on-one. -on -one. First listen to the groove, then when you feel comfortable join in. Slowing the original track down may also be necessary. The feeling you get when you participate with the rhythm section on one of these seminal jazz records is indescribable. It feels like you're part of an all-star team backing up the soloist. In this case, you're playing behind Miles, and the team that you are on includes Percy Heath on bass, Kenny Clark on drums. That's not too bad. Note that this particular transcription starts after the melody chorus. For the second comping example, we turn to the eloquent and always swinging Barry Harris. This is taken from the 1967 record Luminescence, and the comping is on the tune Nicaragua based on rhythm changes in the key of C with the honeysuckle bridge. A complete explanation can be found in chapter 4 in the book. Again, to get started, use the play along CDs for a demonstration and a pianoless track. Later, enjoy playing along with the original recording. <laughs> Thank you. 
Even if you are new to jazz, this book can be a helpful starter kit. All of the information about building voicings leading up to the comping transcriptions is included. In fact, almost no prior jazz harmony or jazz voicing experience is needed for this program. Below on the description bar, there's a link to the Share Music website where you can view this book. This concludes the first video. Stay tuned for more.